Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your host, Shorty. Uh, today we're going to be talking about your duties as a chase pilot car. Uh, the chase is the vehicle that's behind the load. Um, your duties, it's strange because you're not there for the reason that everyone might think that you're there. You're not there to notify or let people know that's coming up behind you that there's a wide load or there's an oversized load. It's easy enough for them to see it. Um, you can easily tell, I mean, the load's right there in front of them, they can see it. You're there to make sure when the driver needs to change lanes, you block the lane, he can change, move over, when he gets over there and he gets past what the problem is, whether he's passing another vehicle, there's somebody on the, on the shoulder, there's a broke down car or truck. When he gets by there, you're there to make sure he's clear to go back over. Um, you want to make your statements short and sweet. If he turns his left blinker on, you get on the radio, you, you move over as soon as you possibly can. You let him know if there's anyone there and you just say clear left. He knows he's clear to go. When he gets past the problem, then um, you just say clear right. Uh, you don't, as little talking as possible uh, when you're making maneuvers like this. Um, I know some guys yeah, you got a four-wheeler coming up. Yeah, it's clear to be. It's clear to move over. You can do this. You can do that. It's just a lot of times the drivers don't need to hear all that. They just need to hear it's clear left, clear right. Uh, that's your number one duty: taking care of your truck's movements. Your second duty is to watch the truck's tires, the load straps, the load uh, 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 chains and binders, um, making sure they're staying tight. Does the load look like it's shifting? Does it look like it's rolling? Um, is it tight? Are all the wheel, are all the tires inflated correctly? Uh, those are mainly your jobs. If it's a blowout, usually everybody hears it's a blowout. Uh, it's like a shotgun going off. So just make sure that you you watch the whole what you can see of the truck uh, when you do change lanes look down the side of the load make sure it's okay while you're there and then move back over uh, when you're when your truck is passing another vehicle you want to make sure he's at least two car lengths in front before you say clear right and then you go on up and then when it's clear for you then you move on over um, watch people that are coming in uh, from an on-ramp because they'll try to get in between you. Um, it's not illegal, but it's not advised because of why you're there. Uh, your third reason for being there is when you're in, when you're off the freeway and you're going through a town or small area or making your delivery, a lot of times you don't, the truck can't clear a curb and you're there to watch and make sure that his tires when he's coming to a curb, you let him know he's one foot away. He's starting up the curb. He's on the curb and tell him as he's going off the curb. Third wheel up, third wheel down. All is good. Because when as soon as that first tire gets on that curb, that one tire, those two tires, are carrying the entire load of that back section because it's lifted everything up. The, the, the other tires are just sitting there. They're not really holding any weight. So you want to make sure that he knows because he's going to be taking it slow and that's why. So uh, those are your three main duties. Your fourth duty is something most pilot car operators do not talk about. Um, it's the bad side of being a chase. Uh, the chase is probably the most dangerous place and it's the most dangerous position. Um, I've had nine friends in the last three years um, die as a chase. 
items falling off the truck and going through the windshield of your vehicle. It happens. It's uh, not as frequent as it used to be. Uh, we used to have it quite a bit. Um, uh, uh, there's a little more regulations now on movements. But uh, a buddy of mine here just a few months ago uh, down in Texas, he took a four inch long, two inch round uh, uh, oil rigging bolt, came off of an oil rigging, and it went through his chest. Uh, killed him instantly. Uh, some of the oil rigging units down in uh, Texas, uh, down south anyway, they're actually putting a uh, chain link fence from their front bumper up over their hood, up over their windshield, uh, and at least the stuff bounces off. But uh, the states are realizing that that's defeating the purpose of why we're back there. We are back there to catch it before it hits a civilian. That's part of our job. That's the reason we carry a $1 million insurance. Um, so that's, that's the duties of a pilot, uh, of a, a, a chase operator. So um, it's, it's a fairly easy job. You don't have to worry about a whole lot of stuff, where you're going, your routings, none of that. You just follow the truck. You let him know what's going on. If the driver's talkative, then that's fine. Talk all you want. 90% of the time, you won't say 10 words in a trip. Uh, you just sit back there. Um, don't get used to, I, I know a couple guys that just run around with their headphones on and they're oblivious to what's going on. Uh, they don't even watch for blinkers or anything like that, and that's your main position back there. But... Uh, it's it, there, there's good money to be made in this business uh, and if you work at it you get to know uh, the trucks you get to know the people uh, get to know other pilots um, that's the best I've gotten more loads off other other pilots than I have trucks uh, and logging or uh, uh, oversized load companies um, and that's just from word of mouth if I go to a truck stop and I see an oversized load there and he's by himself, no load on, nothing, I'll go over and give him my business card. If I see an oversized load at a truck stop or at a rest area and he's got pilots with him, I go say hi and shake hands with the pilots and give them a card. And I've gotten more work off pilots and I give more work to pilots because of that. I, I mean, I... I don't do a broker fee. I do probably 200 loads a month. I give away to other pilots that are in an area that I can't get to, and they're there. I've got a list of 300 pilots that uh, I can I can call at a moment's notice. I don't take a percentage of it. I don't want it. I'm not a broker. I don't want to be a broker. Uh, I don't want you know. I don't want the hassles of making sure that my drivers get paid. Let the let the driver collect the full amount. And that's the way I look at it. But uh, those are the main details as far as a chase goes. Uh, if you have to go to the bathroom, uh, just let the driver know. He'll try to find a place as soon as he can to pull off. Uh, there's, there's no big deal about it. A lot of times you're in a spot where, especially the lady uh, pilots out there, there isn't a... Uh, feminine place to go to the bathroom I mean a guy can run behind a tree somewhere or up right alongside the car it's what I do I open the door up and go to the bathroom um, but uh, a lot of times the ladies will have to carry a bucket with them and they go up behind a tree and try to find a quiet spot uh, uh, some ladies will carry um, they go to a uh, uh, medical supply place and they get a bedpan a female feminine bedpan for a hospital and they'll do it going right down the road you know um, that's what most guys do they've got a bucket or they've got I use a gallon jug uh, because sometimes when you start out at daybreak you don't stop again until it's almost dark uh, because you're on such a time crunch uh, the only time you're saved is when you get to go, uh, you have to stop and get fuel, and uh, you can get gas. 
but those are things that you'll learn on the road uh, uh and it's up to the truck you're with how big it, it the wider it is the harder it is going to be to find a place to pull over uh they won't fit in a lot of uh, uh rest areas uh, sometimes they don't even fit into a lot of truck stops so you're stuck until that load gets where it's going and uh it can be a little difficult at time um and that's for no matter what your position is uh, uh you're getting off the road and doing things it, it it's uh few and far between a lot of times uh, the drivers are set they've got to take a half hour break at a certain point in the day they've got to do this and they got to do that well wherever that half hour break is uh it may be a off ramp that has absolutely no nothing anywhere around you now if you can remember what was a couple exits back and there was a restaurant there or a, 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 a tr truck stop or a gas station where you can run back while he's taking his break then you're okay um, just remember that too when you do something like that your flags need to be taken down you can leave your sign up but your your flags need to be taken down to show you're not with a load shut your lights off leave your sign up just take your flags off and go to the store or whatever you need to do um, they the states just don't like us running around with our flags on uh, I don't know why that's such a big deal when you're only gonna go a mile and then come back or whatever but uh, they seem to frown on it um, and I say that lightly and nicely because of California and they are the worst to watch what you're doing uh, they don't really care other than you know uh, they see you doing something wrong and they get you for it but um, Oregon is just as bad I mean Oregon you leave your flags up here and they just love to pull us over because then they and legally the the truck the load has to pull over too uh, luckily when you're doing something like that it's the trucks on the side and you're going to back to a truck stop or a bathroom or to get lunch for everybody or whatever which you do that quite often uh, uh, leave your passenger seat somewhat clean and clear for your truck your driver to come over and ride with you a lot of times he'll just park on the side of the road and you'll take him to his motel room uh, where you're gonna stay for the night uh, you'll take him to get something to eat um, or he'll have you pick it up for him or whatever whatever's going on um, but uh, that's really all there is to be in a chase it, it's the four position it's the four reasons watch is changing lanes uh, watch the load watch out when you go around corners and towns over curbs and uh, ditches and things like that make sure you let him know how the trailers walking and uh, being there for something to fall off the uh, fall off the load um, you should stay as a chase within 50 feet of the trailer of the back of the trailer that way it's far enough away that a lot of times something will bounce and it'll be a second bounce and it won't go through the windshield it'll hit underneath um, but it's close enough that it's it's makes it <coughs> excuse me um, a little intimidating for someone to cut between you even if they're trying to take an exit which they will uh, there's no way of stopping it uh, there's people out there that will do it no matter what um, and I know a lot of the other professional operators if you're watching this have, have seen it and have had it done someone in a little sports car will actually go underneath the load a lot of these bridge beams uh, are up so high that you can actually drive underneath the load and I've had it happen many times many times uh, around Sacramento especially um, and uh, uh, through Chicago uh, uh, through Dallas Texas uh, San Antonio Texas Los Angeles uh, Portland Oregon uh, everywhere you always have somebody that they go like this underneath um, uh, one lady we were in town and uh, this was up in uh, Spokane Washington we were in town doing our last turn to go to, into our delivery or we were 
two blocks down the road, we were going to be taking our, our exit to go into our delivery. And at a stop sign, she came and put everything's right there, and it's a fairly cheap buy. Uh, Amazon now has 99% of the stuff. Uh, they've got the aluminum sign, but they don't have the mount for it. So it's just the sign you're buying, and then you buy a blank mount or build your own. Um, but uh, all it has to be for a car, minivan, or a pickup truck is the sign has to be 60 inches wide, one foot tall, 12 inches tall, with 10 inch, one inch thick block lettering, and it's called construction font. And it's an emergency, it's just a regular, it, it, they, they have it on file. I mean, everybody does that does vinyl lettering. But uh, uh, don't get the 84 inch, that's the size of a truck. Okay, that's a full size bumper to bumper, uh, wheel to wheel on a big truck. Uh, but 60 inches. Uh, the link will be down below if you want to just order it off Amazon. Um, there's a few other places out there that carry them. Barney's out of Portland, or Barney's uh, uh, Pilot Car City, they ha offer them. Uh, they're, they're all over the net. I mean, there's other places you can get them. Look on Craigslist. Uh, if you don't mind buying used, uh, there's usually always something on Craigslist for most areas uh, that you can buy, L whether it be lights. Um, lights are a hard one to go with because they've already been used and you don't know how much longer they're going to last. So uh, I'd be careful buying lights on Craigslist because you don't know how old they are and what kind of problems you might have. But uh, And the lights are your... Uh, the sign is your largest investment in this business. Uh, your lights are second. Um, and I'll have links below to uh, LED lights that are, oh, they're about 24 inches wide. And they do all kinds of different patterns. Uh, flash, blank, roll, whatever. Um, and then you've got your rotating lights that just sit there, just like the old cop cars. You know, they just sit there and do this. Uh, if you're going to get those, get the really bright ones. Um, there will be a link below to a really bright set uh, that I like. And of course, my the ones I've got on my vehicle, I paid $149 each for. I bought them through Barney's up in Portland. And... Uh, but they were fantastic. They even let me use their shop to install them. Uh, I used their drills. I used everything they all the everything I did. I did right there in their shop. But uh, uh, there's others that you can get that will attach right there, or you can buy the sign with the lights already on them, and they're a great start. They're not real bright, but they're a great start. You can change the bulb inside and go to a bright uh, Cree LED light which will increase them greatly. Or if you're going to go with the light bars. Uh, I know one guy, he just spent $1,200 on a light bar, LED light bar. It's 48 inches. Uh, it it should do dishes and cook dinner. Uh, it does so much. Um, it's extremely bright, uh, but I've never had to use anything like that. In fact, my, my thoughts are... Um, you don't want attention put on you. You want to be seen, but you want people to see the load. Last year, there were 1,600 uh, uh, oversized loads that were in wrecks on two-lane roads, okay, and um, in the U.S., and it the main reason was, and you can hear, listen to everyone that who was in the accident say, "I was watching the pilot car. I didn't see the truck." The pilot cars were so lit up; they had so many lights, it took the person's attention off the road to look at the lights, and they had hit the side of the tracks of of a oversize a, a bulldozer or a, a track hoe. Um, so to me, I've got two rotators that are 360 degree. I've got two LED strips, front and rear. And that's all I've got. I am very well seen. They look at me and I, I drive almost right on the white line. I mean, I, I set myself so close that they, they oncoming traffic move over. 
and that helps push them off to the side a little bit and they don't look at me They're, they they look up at the load so there's little tips and tricks uh, some guys will say oh god no you need all these lights to be able to be seen no you don't that's why every construction vehicle that's owned by the state and federal they have one little flashing light or two little rotators that's it it's ridiculous to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on all these lights that the headlights flash and do this and this the bumper does this and he's got 2500 lights up across the top uh, I saw one the other day he had a complete LED bar around his whole rig and it's like it is oh my god it looks like it'd be a great Christmas ornament but you don't need them uh, two rotators if they're bright great uh, a, a, an LED a little light bar the one that I'm going to show down below is $35 and it's more than bright enough to be seen especially if you're using a small car it's perfect it's about 18 inches it sits right on your roof uh, it's got magnet mounts uh, so it, it, it was suction cup uh, or a rubber pad so it doesn't scrape, scratch the paint anyway and it locks down and I've had them in 80, 80 mile an hour uh, going down the road and they don't budge so uh, that's the second thing is your lights uh, don't scrimp on them but you don't have to spend a thousand dollars my whole set I've, I've got about four hundred dollars tied up in mine but it took me three years to buy it all because I didn't buy it all at once I did the rotators in fact I had a cheap set of rotators on there and they weren't bright enough um, I, so I bought the new ones and they are extremely bright um, and then I decided to go with the LEDs because I found them on sale. Uh, Amazon had them for 58 bucks a piece. They were 24 inches, and then it was, but it was front and back. They were the lights were like this. Well, I took them and they were separate. Well, I took them and opened them up and made one bar, and I put one bar up front and one bar in back. And made it extremely bright and very nice uh, uh, LEDs. They don't use a whole lot of electricity, so your your alternators not having to overwork. In fact, they use half the electricity that my rotators do. So um, that's that's the one thing about the the lighting is just get what you need to be seen. Okay, worry about them seeing your load, not you. Um, because they're gonna they're gonna notice the flashy lights right from the get-go California uh, has the trucks 90% of the time when you cross into California especially from Oregon when you get to the Shasta scales they tell the driver to shut his lights off the only one that's supposed to have his lights on is the pilot car that's it so you just need to make sure that they see you or they see him and that's it um, the third thing is your flags. Um, here they are. It's a half inch wooden dowel. It's an 18 inch by 18 inch square flag. Orange or red. Um, and that's all there is to it. And you cut these off right here so they'll go in your, they'll set like this above your vehicle uh, in your in your rack uh, where your light bar is and your sign is um, I carry about 10 of them with me at all times uh, orange and red the only time I ever use red is when I go into Utah they're the only state that I know of that requires you to have red flags uh, you can run red uh, through all states uh, they, there's no questions there there's no problems but if you run orange in Utah they'll have you pull them off and put red on and uh, they had a friend of mine uh, he went through Utah here a while back coming out of Wendover Nevada into Utah at the uh, port of entry scales there he had orange flags up they made him go back to Wendover to get a set of red flags while the truck sat there doing absolutely nothing he had to drive it was only four miles but still he had to drive back he could not find red flags it was like six o'clock in the evening and he, they still needed to go another hundred miles before they could stop for the night and he went back to Wendover finally went to Walmart 
got a can of red spray paint, went and spray painted his orange flags red, and they let him go. So, uh, that's Utah. <laughs> it's uh, uh, There's different rules and regulations for each state, and it, whatever state you're going to go into, you need to learn at least some of it. Um, the, uh, the other thing is you need one of these. It's a stop slow sign. That's it. So they run about $22, $24, uh, it, most anywhere on the net. So uh, 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 Amazon has them. Uh, your local safety supply place will have them. Uh, a, a lot of your uh, car care auto shops, uh, they carry a few items like this. Um, and the, you just have to have it. I would also pick up a five foot tall uh, piece of PVC pipe and uh, three quarter inches round and that way the dowel will set down inside of it so you can stand on the side of the road and uh, you're not sitting there holding this sign for hours at a time. I've, I've been on the side of the road up to four hours with a load. And it gets a little tough just holding this up there like that because you've got to have it, you've got to keep it up. So you get a pole for it to stick in and let it do the holding. And all you're doing is just holding the sign up. Um, it does help. Uh, they're, what, a dollar for a three quarter inch, five foot, I think, or 288 at Lowe's and Home Depot. They're not a whole lot. You just throw them in your trunk and you just leave it and forget about it really until you need it. Um, you do use the sign a lot. This one's well used and abused. I paid $22 for it uh, on Amazon seven years ago. And I've got one little crunch there, a crunch there. I dropped it there. Um, they hold up pretty well. Uh, so I've never had any problem. I've been out in the snow, rain, sleet, wind, all with it. Um, so outside of that the, there's a couple other little items uh, there are nine states that require a certification for a pilot car um, and like Oregon and California require nothing you don't need the certification but there are a couple of things if you go into Nevada uh, you'll need a, a $2 amber light permit which you can get online uh, you just pay the two dollars and you download the permit and it'll go in your packet uh, then Arizona and New Mexico they don't require a certification but they will inspect you to make sure you have the entire list of required items and uh, which uh, if you go to the website at uh, pilotcarmap.com, you'll see on the left side it says list suggested uh, items because I had required on there and I had a few people jumping me for having it say required. Well, it is required by the federal government for you to have almost everything on that list in your vehicle and uh, to be a true pilot car. Now your second largest expense um, or excuse me let me go back if you get a Washington or a Utah certificate it's a one day class and um, very easy to pass but it gives you a lot of information and a lot of stuff that you will need um, to keep in the back of your mind um, it's a one day class it runs about I think 165 here on the west coast uh, but those two states because of the way they do the test those are re are accepted in every state in the US okay um, the only one you want to stay out of uh, or what most guys do they don't like going into New York uh, so that you get to the border of New York and you get a New York pilot to take it on in but uh, the Washington and Utah certificate and then New York has their own certificate that's good in their own state and you have to have it and the only way you can get it is to go into New York go to the nearest DMV and take the test that's it that's the only way you can get a New York uh, certificate 
But uh, the Oregon or the Utah and the Washington certificates are good in all states. So you're covered across the board. The, the certificates are good for three years. You'll get a Washington certificate, uh, a DOT certificate that you put on your windshield uh, in a corner, uh, normally on your right side, so the, the uh, uh, port of entry or the, the scale master can see that it's there. You get a card that goes in your wallet that shows that you passed the test and that you renew every three years. Um, and it's a hundred, like I said, it's about 165, and then every three years you renew it, and it's like 135. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's an easy test to take. It's, a, it's an open book test when you're done with the day, and it'll give you an idea of uh, heights, weights, widths, uh, lengths that are allowed on certain areas in certain towns, and then uh, you just follow that. Um, the second other thing that you have to have to do pilot car, and a lot of guys think they can get away with it, not having it, and that is a one million dollar commercial um, insurance. Okay, uh, there's uh, two of the better companies out there right now that carry a pilot car insurance, and that's exactly what you ask for when you call them. Charles Kaya, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, you can find them online. They're one. The other is Progressive. Progressive has a pilot car insurance. And uh, for myself, I, I have a $1 million coverage with a $2 million uh, extended coverage for Pennsylvania. I don't know why they need extra, but they do. Um, but anyway, mine runs $95 a month, and that covers three vehicles. So I've got three vehicles. Why I I I just I blanket them. Uh, I covered all three, but I pay one night or I pay $95 a month for one million dollar coverage uh, for pilot cars. Um, they're soon going to be having a new insurance that's going to be required if you do high pole. Um, and it's looking like it's going to make being a high pole uh, pilot out of rate. I mean, we're not going to do it. Uh, the, my, the one place I deal with, they're talking $3,000 a year. I don't make $3,000 a year doing high pole. Why would I pay it? So, uh, because it's going to be a $10 million coverage in case because of you, your load hits a bridge. And that's that's where we'll get into that later when we're doing the high pole series. Um, but for now, that's about it. Just remember, you you got your basics now to start with. Your most expensive item is your rooftop sign, unless you're in an, a state that allows for the bumper signs. Okay, uh, I don't like them. I don't think they should be allowed, but they are allowed in some states and. I know if you come into Oregon with a, a bumper sign on, you will be removed from the load, and uh, you'll have to call in someone else with a with a rooftop. Um, people cannot see the sign. If you've got a four wheeler, a little four wheeler in front of you, they cannot see that sign because it's down on your bumper, and that's the main reason. It's the sign has to be seen. Uh, some of your Midwest states, they don't they don't require that. So you're out nothing as far as a sign goes because you can buy those signs for twenty four dollars at any truck stop, and they'll set they'll set across your bumper. You'll have to get one in front, and one in back, and pull put them up and take them down every time you go to a, go on a load. You still have to have the, the the lights on top, but you don't have to have the sign. Everybody says that all well, those rooftop signs they cost so much trouble they 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 cost me more in fuel it's more wear and tear on the rig um it, i just say bull okay my 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 rig i get 24 miles per gallon with my sign down i get 24 miles per gallon with my sign up i get 235 when i put my flags on the flags actually cause more drag because I have my sign set at 82 degrees. After it goes over my 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 windshield, 
the air is still traveling up. There's nothing there to block it. It's set at 82 degrees, which is legal by federal law. You don't have to be straight up and down. Straight up and down, you're hitting a wall. Yes, that's bad. But anyway, just look at some of the ones going down the road. They're all angled like this. And you, you're not going to lose that much in, in uh, uh, fuel mileage. But I think for today, I think that covers just about everything I wanted to go through. Uh, if there's anything I forgot about this first section, we'll get into more later. Excuse me. And uh, I forgot I had that on. Um, We'll get into more later. Uh, if I forgot something, please let me know. Uh, I know a lot of you professional drivers, uh, pilot car operators out there aren't going to watch this. They already know what to do. Of course, I love being made fun of, so let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe, and uh, uh, let me know how I'm doing, and we'll continue with this. I'll be back out here tomorrow uh, in my shop to do another uh, to do another video on uh, what it is uh, in the position of being a chase. All right, excuse me, not a chase. Uh, in the position of being a lead. And that's when the fun starts. So y'all have a good day. Take care. Like and share. And be sure and visit the website, uh, pilotcarmap.com. Get signed up. It's growing like crazy. A lot better than I hoped it would. We're still writing code. To get all the emails to get all the uh, uh, tweaking done but it'll soon be all finished so uh, let me know how you think let me know what you think and if there's any questions just let me know I'll talk to you later bye bye